Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Under Air Staff Curiosity. I'm Sam. And I'm Becca. Since we are looking into issues that we are curious about, today we'll learn about an organization that helps a group of people who made San Francisco the vibrant city it is today. That's right, Becca. Today we'll be learning about Open House, an organization that works to improve the overall quality of life for LGBTQ plus seniors. This is really exciting, Sam. Everyone knows that the queer community contributed a lot to the framework that makes San Francisco such a fun eclectic city but not many people think about the concerns that older members of the LGBTQ plus community experience. I'll be speaking to Kelly Harris a representative from Open House. And I visited the organization to get a tour to see firsthand the kind of services they offer. Becca, do you know that the LGBTQ plus seniors have a difficult time finding safe and affordable housing? I didn't know that. Why do you think that is? I don't know too, Becca, but that's something we need to get to the bottom of in this episode. If we were unaware of this issue, I bet a lot of other people are too. Let's check it out. Hey guys, we're all here in San Francisco State to talk to students about the issues of LGBT plus seniors in terms of housing. So let's go! What do you know about the LGBT plus seniors in regards to housing? I know a little bit about this situation. I know that the housing prices are skyrocketing and the seniors that help make this community are no longer able to afford it. I really don't know much, honestly. I remember when I was a freshman, there was the Title IX. That was really all that I know about LGBT and housing. No, I didn't know that older LGBT people have problems find housing now. For me, I only know the issue of LGBTQ uh, more on the environment rather than housing. I don't know, but I would like to know. I'm really unfamiliar with the issues that are being faced by the uh, LGBT senior population with regard to housing. How do you feel about LGBT plus seniors being forced out? It's a really messed up situation to me because they kind of helped build this community and now they're unable to live there and afford it. I think the LGBT community being pushed out for high housing rates is a little ridiculous, honestly. Um, yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous because like when you think of San Francisco, you think of the LGBT community. So it's kind of like, it's just a little messed up. Affordable housing for the LGBT community doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's across the board. It doesn't matter what particular aspect of it, the housing crisis is everywhere. Well, in my opinion, for me, like, I felt bad for those LGBTQ seniors because they're kind of being left out with the society and now can, um, our new generation is coming and we like, we're kind of taking over them. We're, for them, like, for us, like, we do have a voice. I mean, that sucks that, especially LGBTQ, would have trouble here in SF. I feel like this would be one of the most open cities for them to like feel comfortable and be themselves here. So yeah, I mean it definitely sucks that they're having trouble finding housing, which is probably the biggest stress here, even more so in school. I think it's a shame that people are being forced out of their homes and the neighborhoods that they help to create. I think it's what attracts people to San Francisco and while people are coming here they're displacing the very people that made it what it is. What questions do you have for Open House? The only question I have is how can I help and what can I do to, to help out these seniors so they're able to live in their, their communities. What does Open House offer to people or the LGBT community? I'm wondering what is being done right now and who's doing it and how everyone else can help anyone else who's interested. I'd like to know more about it, like why it's going on and uh, the motives behind the people. Among all the people being displaced, are LGBTQ seniors being particularly affected? How do you discriminate against that? Is against that? Like, is that something that people can see and they're like, oh, you're from the LGBT community? Now that we know that students are really aware of this issue, let's head back to the studio to learn more. It turns out a lot of people are as unaware about this topic as we are, Becca. We'll find out more after the break. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. I've yeah. it's not my first time bartending, so. It's a sausage party in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'm very familiar. <laughs> yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing, yeah. is that the music, when Momo kicks it into high gear, is going to get a little bit loud in here. Mm -hmm. So 
Your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you, so you may want to. What? Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome back. Sam, did you do anything fun this weekend? If doing homework and binge watching Friends is fun, I guess so. Well, no one told you life was gonna be this way. I'll be there for you even though your puns are really bad. Okay. I'm kidding. How was your weekend? It was awesome. I had the chance to go and visit Open House and I got a really great tour. Oh, nice. Okay, I can't wait to see that. That definitely sounds really fun. Yeah, and I didn't even tell you the best part. They work with an organization called Muttville. Muttville? Isn't that the organization that works to get senior dogs adopted into fun and happy homes? Yeah, what a cute idea. Can you imagine those cuddly little fellas, senior dogs with senior citizens? To learn more about Muttville and how you can help out, check out muttville.org. Hello, we're here at the Bob Ross LGBT Senior Center. Let's go meet some folks and check it out. that began as a little, uh, a big interest with a little start in having housing for LGBT seniors. It's a senior organization and uh, it began, oh, maybe, I can't know for certain, I'll say 10 plus, maybe 12 years ago. And all the time their focus was on housing, but these other needs, were, they were helping with, and it, it, you know, they had an office downtown, and then they grew so much they had to go to the LGBT center and rent space because they needed space for holding meetings and, and support groups. And then finally, after many years, the housing, finally they got a space at 55 Laguna which was a part of, also of Berkeley um, uh, University. So that space was going to have uh, units that were affordable for disabled, um, HIV, and then your um, healthy seniors. Uh, we have a very big program for housing where uh, People come in and it's both in English and Spanish. Uh, and you sit with the person, they show you how to go about searching for housing, where you find it, and all the places that are listed uh, for seniors. We have a, a friendly visitor program that's ongoing, that's wonderful. That is, it, you know, a lot of people are at home and can't get out and about. And so we have a visitor, and sometimes it's a um, a one-on-one, -on -one. and um, sometimes it's a telephone. Some people just are needing a call. Grief group is absolutely wonderful, um, and I had lost my partner, and I came to their support group, and it helped me tremendously. Uh, I've gone to uh, several of their events, if it's LGBT or not, seniors in general, um, there's more to offer here, and in, in the things that are totally of interest to see is medical. And I can tell you in the 1990s, you could rent a room for 350 
Oh my god. Wow. In the Castro. <laughs> and then with the first dot com, which was like 96, then go to 750. And now it's probably like, what, 1550. For the same. <laughs> Students that come in on Saturday in the art class, that's their work. That's cool. it's, it's like a collage. Yeah. I love that. That's they come awesome. in every Saturday morning. What are your guys' favorite activities here at Open House? Um, they have um, a rainbow lunch every other, I think it's the second Wednesday. That's cool. Very diverse. Very diverse. A lot of people from the community come. I see now that there's more awareness for seniors. Um, and particularly, again, it's the only place that I know of that LGBT seniors can find the comfort. And this is the only LGBT senior housing. Mm -hmm. Um, so how I find it is very, um, very much aware and a lot more support than you would find in other cities. I teach Tai Chi for arthritis. We do that um, twice a year. We'd like to do it more, but the funds are not always there. And we do get a big... Uh, always get a big response on, in our programs. Sometimes they can't keep up with it um, because they get ill or whatever the changes may be. Again, you're dealing with seniors. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but that's where Open House is so strong in their understanding and what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. Nothing is a commitment. You come as you can. I really learned so much from Open House, and as you can see, they're still expanding, so it's very much a growing community. They were so nice and welcoming. We're here now with Kelly Harris, a representative from Open House. Welcome down to SF Curiosity, Kelly. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us, how do you get involved with Open House? Personally, um, I have a background in arts and music programming, and I am fascinated by storytelling. Um, so I was given an opportunity to come to Open House and meet some of the community members and help tell their stories and help raise awareness and create visibility for people that are uh, underserved or who need to have the services that are provided by Open House. Cool. Tell me about a story that um, you've heard from um, a senior. Well, Patty Ann, she's fabulous. She's a trans woman of color. Um, she was someone who um, was homeless for a time, and Open House helped her find housing. Um, and since she has really come out of isolation, and she attends all of our workshops, she attends Rainbow Lunch, um, and she's really a staple in our community. Nice. What is your favorite part about working for the organization? It's really just meeting people in community and uh, being reminded of who we're serving and just finding so much inspiration in the stories. I mean, we serve people who have survived the AIDS crisis. Um, I meet people who have faced some really, really adverse times um, and have come out of it and been able to tell their stories. And one thing that we love to do is provide a space for that to happen. Um, we have a friendly visitor program um, that I'm very proud of. I think that we serve over a hundred um, community members um, with volunteers who come out and collect stories, um, have great social time, um, and become advocates for their friendly visitor uh, representatives. I'm sure there's a lot of visitors or, or volunteers to come over to help Open House. Absolutely. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the most important resources that Open House offers to their residents? 
Well, I was just speaking about our friendly visitor program. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the biggest uh, obstacles facing um, seniors who are in the LGBTQ community specifically is isolation, social isolation. So friendly visitors, um, come and they can help shop, they can bring um, their clients to uh, community events, um, but really are there for them um, in times of need. Um, and so that's one thing that we offer. We also offer a housing workshop. So um, we provide housing at Open House, but one thing that we're focused on is becoming a resource for people to come and find out where they can find housing in San Francisco. Whether it's a lottery system or a waiting list, we help provide services so that they can find out about these opportunities. Do they struggle in finding a house and how do you help them if um, they don't get the lottery? Right. Well, one thing we're there for them, um, we have um, a health and wellness program um, and that provides um, all sorts of opportunities for people to talk about um, the stress and some of the obstacles that they're facing with housing. As you know, in San Francisco, we are in a housing crisis. So um, one thing that we pride ourselves in is that we're there to provide one-on-one -on -one, um, attention and social services to those who need it. Nice. Uh, what, what are some goals that Open House hopes to achieve in the future? Well, we are in a very exciting time right now. So we just broke ground on a new building um, right next door that will provide another 79 units of housing and also 7,000 square feet of activity or program space. So um, this really uh, extends the, um, the uh, programming to a, a bigger population. Um, so we're hoping that we come up with some really amazing programs as we sort of navigate through what our seniors need in our community. Um, and so we're very excited about that. Will there be any new programs for um, the seniors? Absolutely. So um, one of the areas that will be part of the, the new space is a lifelong learning center where language classes can be offered um, and yoga classes, meditation, um, or any sort of program as we look at our seniors and who are serving that we think will be uh, beneficial for them at that time. Cool. Uh, how can a community get involved with and work with Open House? Well, obviously come to our website and send us an email and come to the front door, ring the doorbell. I mean, open house, open door. We're here, we want to meet you. Uh, one thing that's very beneficial is um, the intergenerational programming. So um, there are so many things that we learn from our seniors and there are so many things that we can teach our seniors in our community. Um, and so the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with some of our community members is just a really invaluable experience. I'm also very sure that the seniors can also teach us uh, in telling them, telling us their experience about their lives. Absolutely, yeah. and that's part of the storytelling piece is being able to get those stories and continue to make sure that people know about um, why it's so important that we honor those who have fought so hard for the opportunities that we now as LGBTQ members of our community get to, to experience. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for bringing awareness about Open House. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Yeah. In just a couple of minutes, we'll feature local rock band Tribe Divine. We'll be right back. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Boom. Hey yo, let's crawl. 
boom, boom, boom. Right, let's crawl. Right, yo, let's crawl. Boom. Hey, Trap Divine, thank you so much for having us yeah, and you. hanging out together. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> nice. Happy to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about how you guys all got together? Uh, yeah, so um, the majority of us moved here about six, seven years ago, um, and we've been playing a bunch of different projects in the city, but this band, as you, as you see it now, uh, we got our start playing house parties, actually right here in Park Merced. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so we, we play house parties for all the students that gra uh, graduated or finished the semester, and then that's kind of how we kind of got our start and That's our so following cool. here in the city. Yeah. So very much a local band. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, how about musical influence? Are there any bands or um, artists that help create your sound? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we got a whole bunch of things going on. Um, we, we grew up singing a lot of Motown. Um, so, in, you know, a lot of our music, we, we have a lot of like two, three part harmonies. Um, reggae and punk mm -hmm. rock is a big thing. Um, Sublime, we listen to a lot of Led Zeppelin. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a very big mix. It's like a mixture of yeah. like different artists. Yeah, and that's cool. You're nice. That's yeah. cool. And I can definitely like feel those vibes when you guys play. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, what's the best part about being in a band that gets to perform in a city like San Francisco? Uh, well, specific to San Francisco, I think like people are really welcoming and opening open to, to the variety of music that we play. You know, um, when we when we toured this last summer, it was very evident that you know we were different. Um, but here, everyone is just like, yeah, we, we love what you do, you rock, and we've always had a great response to our music. Mm -hmm. um, and just the, the amount of people willing to help and, you know, uh, like the pro bono stuff or like, you know, hey, we'll, we'll open for you, we'll open for you, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's, the city's just really welcoming mm -hmm. for music like ours. Feeling the community. Yeah, That's definitely. awesome. Awesome. And one last question. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about the song you're going to perform today. Yeah, so uh, the song is called Sleepless. Um, it's about uh, an ex-girlfriend, you know, and okay. uh, we wrote it. Um, it's, uh, it stays on the same chord throughout the whole, all the verses, um, and it's kind of quick, and the reason why is you're, you're having trouble sleeping and your mind's racing, and so the first verse is very much that, like a lot of words very quickly. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's essentially you're having trouble sleeping. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, and, and you wish you'd get the heck out of your head kind of thing, or, or he out of your head. So it's, it's about an ex-girlfriend. Uh, personally, and I think we can all relate to something like that. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Okay. okay, well, thanks so much. Thank Take it away. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah thank thanks. you. <laughs> You know more, but well, I'm too coolly for schooling, but I'm hurting to my core. Got enough for the rent and a little for some booze. Well, I know it's no good, but it's the only way I'll sneak a snooze. You say and quit that shit, you hate it when I use. But your life's a vacation, this is my ticket for a cruise. When my thoughts they get the best of me, I'm told by moving on in loyalty. They wrap their hands around my throat, and in the night I start to show. I'm so tired and I just want some sleep I'm stressing and stressing, it's hard to see this a blessing I should let it go, but won't be more than a lesson Is she with them right now? They just rested bare chested I'm going insane, I think a straight jacket's best Damn, do this to yourself, it's bad for your health But no, you did this to yourself, and she's with someone else And now you're on the bad dreams, these knots need to leave You shut the hell up, you need to get some sleep When my thoughts say get the best of me I'm by moving on in love. 
bells around my throat And in the night I start to choke I'm so tired and I just want some sleep I'm so tired and I just want some sleep I'm so tired and I just want some sleep What a great episode, Becca. We learned so much about LGBTQ plus seniors and the issues they're facing today in San Francisco. With a little help from some of our adorable friends. We would like to thank Tribe Divine and Mudville as well as Kelly Harris from Open House. In next week's episode, we'll explore our curiosity further by showcasing Boys Hope, Girls Hope, an organization that focuses on the development of our community's children. We'll find out how the organization operates as well as how they serve our community by teaching our youth to succeed. Tune in all season while we continue to follow our curiosity. Bye! Bye.